The Avalon CL Fetal and Maternal Pod and Patch frees mothers from wearing belts. This is an extension to the Avalon CL Cableless Solution, which combines convenience, versatility, and ease of use with the CL transducers, freeing the mother from cables. The new optional CL Wide Range Pod extends the signal range of the CL transducers and CL pods worn by the ambulating patient by connecting through the hospital's wireless LAN infrastructure. Secure a patch and skin prep paper from along with water, soap, paper towels, and a razor to shave if necessary. Help the mother to get comfortable in the bed. A good prep is essential to obtain quality signals. Use mild soap to wash away any cream, oil, or gel from the mother's abdomen. Inspect the mother's abdominal skin. The patch should not be placed over piercings, scars, thick stretch marks, open skin, moles, or thicker hair. Thoroughly clean and dry the area. Inspect the single-use electrode patch pouch to ensure that it is not opened, damaged, or expired. Open it and take out the patch. The patch has five electrodes and a connector pin area at the center where the pot is placed. Find the intersection between the vertical midline and transverse mid-abdominal line. Typically, the lines intersect over the umbilicus. Remove the adhesive backing from the central patch. Verify the correct orientation of the patch. The brand printing on the top electrode must point to the patient's chest. Place the central adhesive area of the patch on the patient's abdomen. Then press it down. Lift up one of the four electrodes near the patch. Identify the small area of the skin where you will place the center of the electrode. Use the skin prep paper to prepare the mother's skin. Make three horizontal and three vertical strokes with the skin prep paper at the application site. Focus the strokes on the small area of the skin where the conductive center of the electrode will be placed. Make deliberate but gentle strokes, lifting the finger after each stroke. Do not use too much pressure with the prep paper to avoid skin injury. Avoid placing electrodes over the umbilicus, piercings, scars, thick stretch marks, open skin, moles, or visible hair if possible. Remove the protective cover from the electrode. Place the electrode on the prepared skin. Attach the electrode to the abdomen by pressing down with firm motions on the outer edges of the electrode. Do not apply pressure to the central gel area or the gel may leak out. Repeat the steps for the skin preparation and electrode placement for the other three electrodes. For the last remaining electrode attached to the long flexible cable, identify the small area of skin to prepare so that the center of this reference electrode will be positioned on the midline approximately 6 centimeters, that is 2.4 inches, above the rim of the symphysis pubis. Prepare the skin just as you did for the other four electrodes. If during monitoring the AFHR signal quality is poor, reposition the electrode lower down on the abdomen to maximize the fetal heart rate signal and consider placing the electrode under the paniculus just below the turn. Where the umbilicus has been displaced, position the center of the patch along the midline where it intersects the horizontal line passing over the iliac crests. Alternatively, estimate the midpoint between the fundus and symphysis pubis. Place the last electrode on top of the paniculus approximating to the point 6 centimeters, that is 2.4 inches, vertically from the symphysis pubis. Prepare the skin and apply the electrodes as shown previously. For patients with a high BMI or patients with a large paniculus, an alternative strategy is to position the patch along the midline such that the edge of the top electrode is placed 10 to 12 centimeters, that is 4 to 5 inches, below the fundus. Place the last electrode on top of the paniculus approximating to the point 6 centimeters, that is 2.4 inches, 
vertically from the symphysis pubis. Prepare the skin and apply the electrodes as shown previously. Place the CL fetal and maternal pod on the powered up CL base station to assign it. Wait until the charging LED of the base station stops blinking and then pick up the pod. The LED briefly lights up white to indicate that it is ready to use. Place the pod on the CL fetal and maternal patch. To confirm that the electrodes have a good impedance, do an electrode status check. The CL FNM electrode status window pops up when the pod is connected to the patch. If the electrode is green, the skin contact is good. When a good skin contact status is indicated for all five electrodes, the status window closes and the measurement starts automatically. The CL FNM electrode status window shows the current status of the applied electrodes depending on their connectivity to the skin. If the electrode is red, although you have allowed the gel enough time to be absorbed, the skin contact is insufficient. Repeat the skin preparation. Carefully remove the electrode from the skin. Dry the skin. Repeat the skin preparation procedure. It is not recommended to skip the electrode status check if bad skin contact quality is persistently indicated for one or more electrodes. If the electrode is yellow, although you have allowed the gel enough time to be absorbed, the skin contact is limited. Further skin preparation may be required as shown previously. If the contact status cannot be improved, you can choose to skip the electrode status check by selecting the Skip Check Start Measurement button in the CL FNM electrode status window. Measurement accuracy should not be affected, but fetal heart rate detection may be less sensitive. If the electrode is gray, the electrode status is unknown. This status may be shown temporarily, or in case of a patch malfunction, combined with a technical alarm message, that is, an in-op. In such an unlikely case, retry connecting the pod to the patch. Lift the pod up from the patch, reassign it on the base station, and then place it once more on the patch. After a successful electrode status check, monitoring begins automatically. Allow the measurement some time to get to stable parameter value readings, and leave the patient in bed for 10 to 15 minutes before ambulating. Support the patient during this time with a pillow to allow a comfortable posture. The optional CL wide range pod extends the signal range of the CL transducers and CL pods worn by the ambulating patient by connecting through the hospital's wireless LAN infrastructure. All screen operable functions of the currently connected fetal monitor are accessible through IntelliView XDS remote display functionality in combination with IntelliSpace perinatal revision K.0 or higher. The Avalon Beltless solution combines convenience, versatility, and ease of use 